Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Casey here with uh, HowToPlayStock.com and InvestorsInvestingTips.com. Uh, if you haven't checked out my website, do so immediately because you're going to learn a lot of information there on um, you know how to play stocks, the different uh, you know key indicators and metrics to look at uh, for reading stock prices, and knowing what's overvalued, uh, undervalued, and uh, fair value. Uh, speaking of which, since we're talking about that, I want to cover a video today on uh, price-to-earnings ratios. Um, today is April 7th, 2016, and it, it got me thinking. I was I was sitting here earlier watching the uh, earnings, the first of the earnings reports uh, coming in uh, for the quarter. So I figured, what better timing than to shoot a video on uh, price-to-earnings ratios? Uh, so, anyways. Getting getting started here, uh, price to earnings ratios basically they tell you how expensive the stock is from a price standpoint, uh, given the earnings the stock is generating. All right, now this is good if you are somebody who is going for uh, growth investing. All right, meaning you know buying in on companies that would be paying you know like dividends uh, because if you can buy in, you know what's fair value. Overvalued and undervalued, and you can buy in on on companies that are undervalued uh, throughout time. You you have a much better chance of making better returns because the price is going to be going up due to it being undervalued. Uh, now, when I say undervalued, what I mean is basically as an investor, what you want to do is take your the the company that you're buying in on, and you want to you want to look at uh, the the value. Of whatever you know, whatever it may be, the product, the service, the commodity. Um, you want to look at the price that the company has on their shares, uh, and compare that to the value of what you think the actual product or service or commodity is worth. So you're comparing the price to the to the value of your uh, asset, okay? And and that's what you want to keep in mind when you're looking at PE ratios. Uh, because historically, stocks are good value um, when the P/E ratio is at around 14. Okay, so keep that in mind. Um, 14 is is a good, you know, what they consider a good value. Uh, now the other thing is when you're looking at P/E ratios, you almost want to use these kind of kind of like a, a screener. All right, so so that as a filter that you can. Make a list of stocks and then just go one by one and check the uh, P/E ratios and the ones that don't match, you know, what you're looking for as far as maybe fair value or undervalue. You just, you know, basically disregard them and move on to the next. All right, and it's it's part of the screening process that you can use um, to help you uh, pick out better stocks that are more eligible for for the growth that we're talking about here uh, within growth growth investing. So, we will consider stocks uh, under a P ratio of, of 20. And if you're curious where I'm getting my information, um, it's, it's from this book called All, All About Dividend Investing. All right. It's by uh, Don Schreiber Jr. and Gary E. Stroik. Um, if you haven't read it, check it out. It's a great book. Uh, but it revolves around all of the... Uh, the growth investing metrics uh, that we're talking about here, like P ratios, debt to coverage ratios, uh, stuff of that nature. So, if you haven't read that book, check it out. It's it's a really good book, and that's where I'm getting some of my information from. Is is that book? Uh, so when you're you're going through your screening process on your P ratios, um, you can consider stocks that are under a P ratio of 20. I mean, I'll even can, uh, take for example one of the stocks that I'm looking at right now. Um, I actually I'm already invested in the company. It's Exxon Mobil. Okay, their P ratio right now is standing at like 21.39. I'll have to go back and look at it, but it's it's right around like 21. And uh, that's I mean I'll even consider that stock because it's really close to 20. So if it's a little over 20, uh, you know it's it's nothing to really. Uh, you know, shy away from, especially if it's a stock that you you think is really worth some value to you. Um, so keep that in mind. But, you know, realistically, like, if the P ratio is 25, 26, 27, 28, you know, we'll disregard it. 
when we're looking at, at growth investing and stocks that are fair value and undervalued. All right. Um, and so that's pretty much it with uh, price to earnings ratios. There is a couple other things that I um, made some notes on here from the book. It was basically, uh, you know, the lower the better when it comes to the uh, P ratios uh, numbers. So if you can get below 14, uh, that's even better. All right. Um, the other thing is the ratio can be calculated. If you're curious how, how they come up with these numbers, uh, the ratio can be calculated by dividing the stock's price by the earnings per share uh, being generated. All right. So that's that's pretty much it, guys, for uh, price to earnings ratios. Uh, I'll be shooting another video here soon on uh, uh, debt, you know, the debt coverage ratios, um, dividend ratios, stuff like that. Uh, so if you're somebody who is looking to do some growth investing um, over a, a longer period of time, I'll be shooting some videos on that. Um, and then one other thing that I really wanted to uh, kind of talk about real quick before I end this video is I don't know if you guys have noticed but you know go to Google Finance or go to um, Wall Street Journal any of those and if you've been reading um, some of the articles that are coming out in, in the financial news you'll notice that the uh, the economy is not really doing as good as as what say like the Federal Reserve or the President of the United States is talking about okay realistically uh, we're living in some pretty interesting times right now. Um, and with that with that in mind, I, I wanted to talk about that real quick when it comes to investing because, um, honestly, I think that because of all the, the money printing that uh, Janet Yellen has been doing with the Federal Reserve, I think that uh, we're, we're due here very soon, um, and I would say probably within the next three to six months, for a serious decline in the stock market and I'm not the only one saying this uh, as a matter of fact you can go look at some of the uh, interviews that are taking place you know just in the last couple weeks from guys like Jim Roger uh, oh, who's another one Mark Faber uh, Robert Kiyosaki has even come forward and talked about this a little bit Donald Trump's out there in the open talking about it um, and it's you know we're in a we're living in some interesting times, and we're due for for something major to happen here soon with the uh, with the stock market. And the reason why I'm saying this is because if you're looking to to do some investing, a lot of people will tell you you're crazy if you jump in when the, when the stock market is crashing. Okay, but you gotta keep in mind what Warren Buffett talks about. You know, it's be be fearful. Um, when other people are, uh, God, how's it go? Be fearful when other people are greedy, and then be greedy when other people are fearful. That's how it goes. Um, and that's that's a quote from Warren Buffett. Okay, and there's just remember that because as the stock market's going down, a lot of people are gonna um, they're gonna get fearful. All right, and you should probably do. The exact opposite. You know, those are the best times to buy companies because they're on discount, basically. Um, huge opportunities come come abroad and and are present right there in front of your face when you experience stuff like this. So, and all you have to do is just go back and do a little uh, history research on like the Great Depression, um, you know, and some of the, the stock market crashes that have taken place throughout the years. Uh, to to basically discover that you know those are some great times to to jump in and buy buy up some of these bigger companies because the lower the price you know if you can get in on that when it's when it's at discount throughout time the, the price of that's probably going to go back up you know I mean just historically they always have so and then that's what you're doing is you're posi uh, positioning positioning yourself uh, for for bigger gains. All right, so just something to keep in mind when we're talking about price to earnings ratios and where we're at, you know, currently with the uh, stock market. All right, um, myself, what I'm doing right now is I'm just saving cash because I, I don't want to make too many uh, investments or too many buy orders 
right away because if you watch some of my other videos on uh, avoiding losses through brokerage fees, um, I talk about how you probably only want to invest, you know, maybe maybe two, three times a year. Uh, I would say even lower than that, maybe like once or twice a year, just so that you can cut down on your brokerage fees. Not only that, uh, you know, if you're saving the money and you're holding on to cash and something like you know, a stock market crash or a correction happens, you have extra money set aside already, um, and you're positioned already for better timing so that you can jump in and grab some of these these big-time players, you know, the, the, the bigger companies that have been around and withstood the test of time. Instead of paying god-awful inflated prices on them, you'll be able to buy them for, for way less. All right, and then just hold on to them. Um, so holding on to cash is a good thing, and that's that's basically what I'm doing right now. Um, but you know, other than that, that's that's all I have for today, guys. Um, again, start saving your money, paying your debt off, um, and if you're already investing right now, you know, think long and hard uh, before you put your money on the table. You know, because once you put your money on the table and you're invested with a company, and they normally say what you want to do is look at it like, look at these assets, especially in growth investing, look at these assets like uh, like you would your house. All right, so if the price goes down tomorrow, you're not going to, you know, you're not going to turn around and sell your home just because it goes down and your realtor tells you it goes down in price by 0.05%, you know, the day after you buy it. You're not going to do that. You need to treat your stocks the same way. So... Realistically, if you're going to put your money on the table and buy into a few companies here and there for growth investing, um, you might want to look at it, you know, in that perspective. Okay, so that's all I have for today. You guys have a have a wonderful day, and uh, I will talk to you here soon. Right.